Hey guys, welcome back to another Media Talks TV with your host, Tony J. And today's episode, there's a ban on TikTok as we speak in the House of Representatives and it's the bill has already passed. So now it's in the hands of the Senate right now. This is really, really, I, I believe, one of the first moves of the United States banning social media platforms at this point. I mean, this is really a watershed moment. This is a tipping point, ladies and gentlemen. And... The reason why I say it's a tipping point is because right now, as we speak, there's a debate going on. And hopefully, hopefully this is a this makes it to the Supreme Court and it gets challenged and it gets overturned. But I don't believe that it will get overturned. But this signals one of the biggest issues in modern U.S. history because this is the starting point of the government regulating social media platforms now and banning TikTok simply because it is owned and operated by Chinese by um, Chinese business owners. It it signals the first step in a tech war between the U.S. and China. <clears throat> but it also signals that President Joe Biden really doesn't understand that he might be cutting his nose to spite his face. And I just believe that this piece of legislation is going to be the tipping point of why Joe Biden might lose this election because there are a lot of young people out there that depend on the revenue for the social media platform like TikTok. <clears throat> and if the government is taking away a stream of income, then what does that say about the generation that's in front of us, mainly Gen Z and also millennials who are engaging with TikTok as we speak, have made millions of dollars, well, not millions, but thousands of dollars to pay for their standard of living, to actually up their standard of living. We sit, in, we sit and watch the State of the Union speech this week. And yet, one of the things that President Biden has avoided is trying to tap into the youth vote, which is very problematic. Because the one thing that you should never do is exclude a block of voters and exclude their concerns in terms of what they want and what they need. And throughout the whole entire speech, there was not a mention of the current state of affairs when it comes to the economy and in inflation. But there was in the speech a promise to ban TikTok. And if you don't understand semantics, this is one of the biggest generational divides of our time because 
one of the things that's problematic about some of these older politicians is they don't take into account how important the youth vote is. But I think this might be a watershed moment for millennials and Gen Z becoming a powerful voice and a powerful entity. Because this is the point where Joe Biden may awake the sleeping giant that is the youth vote. The banning TikTok doesn't do anything except close off an opportunity to earn money. And for people like me, like, you know, many content creators out there, it's just a bad move altogether. There's so many people out here right now that can't even afford their own apartment. But a, a platform like TikTok gives them the opportunity. Now, I'm not saying everybody going to be successful on TikTok. But for those that are successful on TikTok, it's been a platform where people could make money. YouTube has become a big issue. People having a, you know, people making money on YouTube. But with TikTok, I feel like it's it's a necessary. I look at it as a necessary evil. In a sense. When you try to get rid of something, something else pops up. <laughs> and one of the things, one of the problem with the United States. Is that we like to ban and criminalize. Things not not. That's not even against the, the morality of a human being, but something that is beneficial to the collective. When we ban alcohol, it led to gang wars. When you have these things, when you, when you have things like, when, when we talk about moral issues, and not something that's harmful to the collective society. It, it really troubles me that the United States is still continuing to go down a rabbit hole of banning and criminalizing things. And with the banning of TikTok, it's just, it's just a further tipping point. It's just the tip of the iceberg of where things are to go in the near future for social media. These platforms, and this is one of the things that I'm afraid of, some of these platforms may not be around. If you look, Periscope isn't around. Vine isn't around. Tumblr isn't around. All these platforms that were getting all this attention, they end up dying. But it seemed like TikTok has gained so much stream and so much attention, mainly because we have this paranoia about China and Chinese interests and Chinese espionage. And that's their justification. It Oh, it's going to uh, destroy the the... the the national fabric, the national security of the, the whole entire country. But believe it or not, our national security is already destroyed. You know, I just think this is just the wrong move. For Biden to do. And I promise you. That if he signs this bill. Into law. He will not. Get. A second term. Ever. Things are going to flip.
But just like when you ignore a certain base or you discount them as being a serious base, this is what happens. So many of our politicians are so out of touch with reality right now that they don't, they, they basically just didn't do a temperature check on society and how it's changed. And the older generation, which are the boomers and mostly most of them silent generation people, they think that the youths don't matter, that the youth don't matter. They discount the youth as not being serious voters. They make mockery of the youth as if they don't have any serious issues that impact them or affect them because they're tuned out of society anyway. So there's no way to convince them, but maybe in some ways this might be the rude awakening that Joe Biden needs. And a prime example of why you cannot ignore the voices or the concerns of your youth base. It's already bad enough for Joe Biden because he can't get the youth vote. Because of this whole Israel and Palestine thing. So now we're staring down the crossroads of really a second term of Trump. And I don't want to believe it, but it could happen. And you can quote me on that. I just wanted to keep this brief. This has been another Media Talks episode, little news brief for the channel. Be sure to tune in for more video updates. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, click the bell notification for more videos. There's more videos coming on the way, so stay tuned. I'm out.